Okay, everybody's on board. The time is now 7 p.m. and I'll call to order this regular meeting of the Perry City Council for Thursday, July 2nd. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I've gone out of order. Uh, we're, not, we're not gaveled into session yet. First, we have our invocation speaker here with us tonight, Pastor Shaw from Shasper Community Bible Church. Thank you. I'm sorry I jumped the gun on you. It's fine. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you and welcome you to this meeting. We give you honor and knowledge as you are our creator and our provider. We also honor our mayor, our councilmen, our council ladies, our city workers, our police officers too. Lord, we pray for the protection of our police officers who are going through a rough time right now in this nation, God. That's just a minority that's against them. May they realize that a majority is for them. Lord, as we begin this meeting, we ask that you guide our thoughts and our actions. So may we, we may have a successful meeting tonight. May our meeting be full of wisdom, productivity, and respect for each other. As we gather to make decisions for our community, may we use only the best skills and judgment. May we consider the merits and the pitfalls of each matter that is placed before us. May we always act in accordance with what is best for our community. And Lord, I also pray for this nation as we come upon the 4th of July. As we celebrate our independence, Lord, there just seems to be an attack against this nation, Father. And I ask for your peace. And I ask for your guidance in this nation. May people realize our freedom was paid by people's lives. That we should not take this for granted. For we are able to gather here without being in trouble and do city council meetings, gather in churches, gather together, Father. We just ask for your blessing upon this nation, Father. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, thank you for your service. Thank you. Now we are called to order. Everyone would please rise and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one day, indivisible, indivisible, liberty and justice, and justice for all. Everyone may be seated. Devin, would you please call the roll? Genevieve Cottrell? Here. Craig Elliott? Here. Mindy Galloway? Here. Adam Grass? Here. Christopher Powell? Terry Wood? Here. Mayor James Hugelet. Here. All of the common floor except Council Member Christopher Powell. I find that a quorum is present to conduct business. So we will move to the first item on the agenda, which is approval of the agenda. The clerk and I have prepared the agenda, and we believe it has all items of business that need to come before you to your for your attention tonight. We submit it to you for your approval or your amendment. I move that we approve the agenda as presented for Thursday, July 2nd, 2020. Spark. Move by control, seconded by Wood to approve the agenda as printed. Is there a discussion on the agenda? Hearing none. Councilwoman Control. Yes. Councilman Elliott. Yes. Councilwoman Galbally. Yes. Councilman Grass. Yes. Councilman Wood. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. That will move us to reading and approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. Devin, would you please read the minutes from the uh, June 18th? 18th I move that we suspend the rules, waive, waive the reading. For the July, I can't hardly do that. For the July, June, June, June 18th. June 18th meeting. Uh, second. Moved by Grass, seconded by Cottrell, that we, sus uh, we uh, suspend the rules, 
waived the meeting and approved the minutes of the June 18th meeting as presented. Is there discussion on those minutes? Hearing none, Councilman Elliott. Yes. Councilwoman Galvedi. Yes. Councilman Grass. Yes. Councilman Wood. Councilman Wood. Yes. Councilwoman Cottrell. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. That will move us to, let's see, pre-approved reports and presentations. We don't have any reports and presentations tonight. I do have some communications for you a little bit later. So that'll take us to public comment. It is at this time during our meetings that we open the floor up for members of the public to address the council on any matter they may wish. We do have a three minute time limit on public comment. We have members of the public present here with us in council chambers. Devin, do we have any members of the public present on Zoom? Uh, there are no hands up. All I have is phone numbers, and I believe it's on council that are phone numbers. So I don't believe we have outside public company. Okay. Would anyone from the public like to address council at this time? Seeing no public comment at this time, we will move to communications. I received a couple of letters from SATA today. The first letter first letter reads, um, the SATA Board of Directors has made its final fiscal year 2020 budget revisions. City of Perry's share of the SATA budget for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2020 is $4,753.82. This is $1,257.23 less than your council committed to a year ago. The savings to the City of Perry taxpayers has been made possible by a combination of a decreased fuel cost, our successful campaign to seek local advertising revenue, as well as our continued efforts to keep our expenses as low as possible. And of course, the major factor of this year is the nearly three month suspension of service necessitated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Please see the attached invoice. In order to comply with our auditor's requirements, we ask that this amount be forwarded to us no later than September 1st, 2020. Of course, any payment made sooner than that will be gladly accepted. Another letter requesting a local funding commitment for the 2021 fiscal year is also being sent. We ask that your council respond to that letter also by September 1st. SATA is appreciative of the support shown by the City of Perry for SATA and its mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable transportation to those citizens who need it. During these unprecedented times, SATA, like other businesses and agencies, is following CDC guidelines and the governor's executive orders. Specifically, all staff and passengers are required to wear face coverings, buses and buildings are cleaned and sanitized throughout the day, passengers must have exact change, healthy assessment questions are asked when making a ride reservation, and social distancing in our building and on our buses is being enforced. SATA will continue to place the safety of passengers and staff as its highest priority. Please feel free to contact me with any questions. Sincerely, Mary S. Rice, Executive Director. The second letter from SATA reads, the SATA Board of Directors has approved the SATA budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2020, fiscal year 2021. The formula for determining the share for each of the participating municipalities has followed the pertinent figures are attached. The SATA Board has adopted a budget which is as lean as possible, but still enables us to serve the citizens of the 12 participating municipalities. As has been our previous practice, the following requested amount will not increase, but could decrease, as it did in the current fiscal year. Any such action would occur in May of 2021. City of Perry's share of total local funding requested for the fiscal year October 1, 2020 through September 30, 2021 is not to exceed $6,522.28. The data used to determine the requested amount is shown in the attached funding model. We are asking that each 
participating municipality forward to us their commitment regarding this request no later than September 1st of 2020. If approved by your council, I would anticipate that you would receive a billing on this amount May 15th of 2021 as a requested payment by August 1 of 2021. We wish to thank you and your council for your past support and ask for your continued support as stated above. During these unprecedented times, SATA, like other businesses and agencies, is following the CDC guidelines and the governor's executive order. Specifically, all staff and passengers are required to wear face coverings. Buses and buildings are cleaned and sanitized throughout the day. Passengers must have exact change. Health assessment questions are asked when making a ride reservation. And social distancing in our building and on our buses is being enforced. SATA will continue to place the safety of passengers and staff as its highest priority. Please feel free to contact me with any questions or concerns. Sincerely, Mary S. Rice, Executive Director. If council wants to see the funding model, the original has gone to the clerk and she'll be able to provide it to you at your request. That's all the communications I have to make. Devin, do you have any communications? I was just going to follow up that that was received today. I also received a copy and that will be in your packets at the next meeting to give approval for the mayor to accept that. Very good. That will move us to mayor and department head reports. Only one of our department heads is with us tonight. Devin, did you have a report you wanted to give to council tonight? I'll try to make this short and sweet. Um, be safe for the 4th of July. Uh, I'm going to talk about the absentee applications that uh, are being requested and that are being sent to your homes. I ask that if you fill out an absentee application, please add, it's not required, but we are asking you to add some form of communication, whether it's an email or a phone number. We are running into, um, because this is new to so many people, they're receiving applications and they are not identifying what they are asking for. Um, we're doing all of our efforts. It's still early that we are resending those applications back and explaining to the voter how to properly fill that out. If you have any questions, please call my office. Um, both, um, all of us office girls should be able to help with um, some questions. Whatever they cannot, they will follow up and I will answer the questions. Also, the polls will be open for August 4th, and if you choose to come in and vote, we will do every effort to make it COVID compliant and safe as possible for you to walk in and vote. Thank you. Very good. Does council have any questions for the clerk? I have one report. Mindy and I forming the work group to discuss employee retirement, health insurance benefits, had a meeting this morning to go over information, and we have now made plans for a um, meeting with the staff. The meeting will be closed. It'll be the work group and the city staff. Our desire is to be able to give the city staff an opportunity to speak directly to us without um, having to make public statements regarding their opinions related to retirement benefits. We will do that the Thursday after the next regular city council meeting. City council members who wish to attend will be permitted to do so, so that you can gather information since this decision ultimately comes to you. Out of that meeting will come the work by Mindy and I to make a recommendation to council on what we should do going forward. I don't have anything else to report on at this time. Does council have any questions for me on any subject? Okay, hearing no questions then, we will move to committee reports. Do members of council have any committee reports to deliver tonight? Hearing no committee reports, we'll move to presentation and approval of the bills. Council has had an opportunity to examine the bills and we seek your permission to pay them. I move that we approve the bills as presented and agreed to be authorized. Motion by Elliot, seconded by Galbavi, that 
We approve the bills as presented and payment be authorized. Is there discussion on the bills? Hearing none. Councilwoman Galbavi? Yes. Councilman Grass? Yes. Councilman Wood? Yes. Councilwoman Cottrell? Yes. Councilman Elliott? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. That will take us to old business. Discussion about becoming a Second Amendment sanctuary city is our first item of old business. Gary, are you ready to discuss this with us? Well, I still have the literature here. I haven't gotten it in there. I haven't been going to the city hall. So we'll just let it ride. And when we get a chance and everybody gets there, we'll, we'll discuss it. We have council's consent to leave this no action taken. Yes. Hearing no objection, it moves to no action taken. <clears throat> Discussion regarding possible amendment to council rules and procedures. I believe that a suggestion was made at our last meeting that this be left until we all come together. Is that still council's will? I would say this. Okay. Is there any objection to leaving this as no action taken? Hearing no objection, it will stay as no action taken. This moves us to our last item of old business. Discussion regarding brick house for sale. Councilman Elliott, they uh, left this on because you brought this up and they wanted to give you an opportunity to address it. So I'll open the floor up first to you. Uh, basically, it was a year or so ago when we, when I first came on, everybody had talked about the fact that the next time this came up to sale, we'd be interested in buying it. And so I saw the sign was out there and wanted to give everybody a heads up see what everybody's interest was. That's about all I have. Does anybody have any interest in buying a house? I don't think we have $100,000 worth of that. I think the vision for it is good, but I think we need first. I think under the circumstances for this year's budget, we shouldn't do it. I agree, Mindy. I don't think it's in our best interest right now. So let's take that off the agenda. To do so, we'll need a motion to table indefinitely. A uh, motion that we table the interest in the brick house indefinitely off of our agenda. Support. Moved by Elliot, seconded by Cottrell to table indefinitely discussion regarding the brick house for sale. Is there any discussion on the motion to table indefinitely? Hearing none, Councilman Grass? Yes. Councilman Wood? Yes. Councilwoman Cottrell? Yes. Councilman Elliott? Yes. Councilwoman Gelbert? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. That will move us to new business. Our first item of new business is discussion, possible approval of amended DPW leave hours. Uh, Council dealt with this already for city staff. This is a request from uh, EPW Superintendent John Sauter for the same activity to be done for his people uh, during the period of the uh, COVID crisis that we restore some leave hours to them. And uh, John unfortunately had a family situation and couldn't be here to present tonight. Devin, do you have anything to add for council on this? Um. If there's no questions, uh, it, yes, it is just the DPW due to that, um, the high risks that first uh, week, the March 23rd through the April 1st, that timeline, uh, the Department of Public Works did decrease the workloads. So John was being responsible and was asking them to go home if, if the work was, the absolute work was done. And so in that time frame. Again, from the time the April 1st, when the 80 hours, sick hours was allowed, the DBW um, would like, um, is requesting that like the girls in the office, to, it to be returned a total for 
the three young men that got it is 36 total sick time hours that would be given back to them if you agree to give that. I move that we approve and amend the DPW leave hours and return their hours back to them. Second. Moved by Grant, seconded by Elliot, that uh, we approve and amend the DPW leave hours and return and then move that we authorize the city clerk to return the uh, used hours. Is that yes. correct? Sure. Okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yeah, are we sure we want to do this? You know, most of DBW work is continuing on. You can't shut down water, you can't shut down sewer, you can't shut down maintaining the roads. I, you know, this I guess I'm a little confused. It's just returning our six hours to them, Terry. It's ones that they already took. Right. It's exactly not what you did for the office staff. Mm -hmm. Is there further discussion? Are you still with us, Terry? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure we didn't lose you there and we weren't here yet. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Wood. No. Councilwoman Cottrell. Yes. Councilman Elliott. Yes. Councilwoman Galbody. Yes. Councilman Grass. Yes. Motion passes by a vote of four to one. That will move us to our next item of new business, possible resolution to adopt water and sewer rates. I spoke with John today regarding uh, him being excused from tonight's meeting, and we would like to leave this one as no action taken until the next meeting so that John can be here to discuss water rates with us in progress on the rate study. Can I have council's consent to leave this no action taken? Yes. Yeah. Hearing no objection, we will move to the last item of new business, possible wage adjustment for election workers. Devin, did you have a presentation you wanted to make regarding this before council deliberates? Um, the, when I turned in the budget, um, I included this consideration. Um, all over the states, there is a clerk server that we are joined with and the wages have not been increased all across the state. So the average is um, going from 12 to $15 increased. When I checked our records, this had not been increased since 2005. It went from $8 to $10. So since 2005, the election wage has been $10 per hour. And we took it to the election commission and it was discussed and due to the extensive hours um, that are asked, there are sometimes that they're there from 6 a.m. until midnight um, the following um, day. And uh, the election commission suggested that we go at the higher end and because it had been so long. So the recommendation that has been presented to you is to consider the $15 increase for election inspectors. For council's recommendation, our current election commission is comprised of Tom Bridges, Devin Miller, and Steve Schweiker. Just so you know where the recommendation is going. So I'll open the floor up for discussion and questions. Wow, that's a 50% increase. It's a big one all at once, isn't it? If you do a 3% going all the way back to those years, um, it's not a 50% increase. I guess it's the way you look at it, Terry Wood. If you average it out and did like the budget that has been going for your em city employees, we do it as a small percent each year. Any further discussion? Does anyone want to make a motion? <clears throat> I move that we increase the election inspection inspector wages 
from the $10 to $15 an hour effective this year. Report. Moved by Elliot, seconded by Cottrell. I think I did it, so I heard. Mm -hmm. Did I get that correct? Yes. That we approve the increase in pay for city election inspectors from $10 per hour to $15 per hour. Is there discussion? Hearing no further discussion. Councilman Cottrell? Yes. Councilman Elliott? Yes. Councilwoman Galvey? I, I think I need to abstain because I do the elections sometimes. She is an election inspector. Yeah. She is working on this. So we will show that uh, Councilwoman Galvey abstained uh, for pecuniary reasons interest that she works as an election inspector and doesn't want to vote to raise her own wages. Councilman Grass? Yes. Councilman Wood? Well, I got to vote right where I want it, don't I? I was going to vote no, but I'll go yes. Thank you. The vote is four yes, one abstain. Motion passes. I'm not sure, did that one need five or four votes, Devin? It's money, I would say yes. Okay, that's fair enough. That'll move us to any other business that may come before council. Do members of council have any other items of business that you need to look consider tonight? There are no other items of business to act on. This is our second opportunity for members of the public to address the council on any matter. Would anyone from the public like to address the city council at this time? Devin, is there any new person on Zoom raising a hand? There's nobody raising a hand, and I don't, do not see anybody new. Very good. Thank you. That will move us to council discussions and observations. Let's see. Council McGillivray. Councilman Wood. No. Councilwoman Cottrell. Thank you to you and the election commission for your service to the community. I appreciate it. Councilman Grass? I'm good. Councilman Elliott? I'm good. I'm good as well. So we will move to agenda items for the next meeting. We will have discussion about becoming a second amendment sanctuary city, discussion possible amendment of council rules and procedures, possible resolution to adopt water and sewer rates. Does anybody else have any other items for the next agenda at this time? If other items, uh, business necessary for your consideration come to your attention between now and our next meeting on July 16th, please alert the clerk. Uh, we will put all appropriate matters before council for your consideration at the next meeting. The time is now. 7.35, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.